Welcome back to our channel, HN Odiki. Now, we will review the next chapter of Berserk, The Guardians of Desire Arc. This is the first of three parts of the D0 chapter where Guts learns of the Behelet. Do you think he'll be calm and rational? Let us find out. The chapter begins with Guts ejaculating, a Behelet? He is very alarmed. The physician questions, you you know what this is? Suddenly Guts grabs the physician by the throat, lifting him into the air with one arm, which must not be that hard since he throws around the raw heap of iron all the time. Eek! Guts! Stop! Protests Puck as Guts strangles the old guy. Who the hell are you? Where'd you get this thing? The physician croaks out it. It's not mine. It's from the castle. I stole it from the Count. I I'm telling you the truth. Huh. Guts mutters as he throws the double amputee trauma victim to the floor. Tell me about it. Tell me everything you know. My name is Vargas. I used to be the castle physician. In those days, the Count was a different person. He was cruel. But at least he was still human. We switch shading techniques. But seven years ago, after getting hold of this thing, the count changed. He began to treat people as if they were mere playthings, dissecting them alive, slicing them open, chopping them up, violating them, and then eating them. His inquisition of heretics became nothing more than an excuse to acquire more bodies. We can see hair behavior trend between this count and the snake baron. Puck and Guts listen on. Puck is horrified. I couldn't bear to be a part of the Count's diversions, so I secretly fled the castle with my wife and two sons. But on our way out, we were caught and thrown into prison. Then the fiend hacked me up. And right before my eyes he took my wife. And my sons. Even now the image is seared into my memory. We flash back to Vargas in the prison. Vargas is suspended by his arms and amputated, watching on with his one eye and freshly mutilated face. He sees the silhouette of the Count next to a table. A flayed corpse. Dismembered heads and torsos lay witness. The figure is stuffing legs into its stretched maw. The Count consumes, almost forcibly monstrous to engulf the child. Guts is a little ticked. Puck is forlorn. Vargas continues. At the time. More than anger or sorrow. More than concern for my wife and two sons. I was. I was nothing but a prisoner of fear. Gutch silently looks on, letting silence fill the room. I used a drug that I'd concealed to feign my death. And when the opportunity arose, I slipped out of the castle, taking this thing with me. It was a miracle. We notice a motif of luck and fortune throughout the series, keep an eye out. Since then, seven years have passed. During that time, I've tirelessly researched every aspect of religion and the occult. But I could never uncover a single clue about the nature of this thing. This. This thing. What in the world is it? Vargas questions Guts about the Behelet. A key. Puck and Vargas are both surprised. Guts clarifies, that key opens a portal to another world that overlaps our own. It's a key that summons demons from another dimension that have manipulated the dark side of human history since ancient times. The five members of the God Hand. Vargas and Puck are both in awe. We then move on outside the door. It appeared someone heard their conversation, and snuck away. We return to the castle of the Count. Many physicians that are not Vargas are surrounding Zonderk. He hits the ball out of a white physician's hand. No Lord Zonderk. They protect. Lord Zonderk, calm down please. An old white physician asks. Zonderk grabs him by the face. Kill. I'll kill you. Zonderk says, grabbing at the bandages on his own face. He kills the old white physician and the others retreat away. What's going on here? Asks a large figure entering the room. It's the Count, with Dala and two white guards behind him. 
He looks displeased. It's His Majesty. What's all this racket? A it's Lord Zondrick's condition. Zondrick screams Black Swordsman. Black Swordsman. I'll kill you. Herm ponders the Count with a devilish grin. Excellency. This is dangerous. May I suggest you return to your chambers? Dal warns, sweatily and wrinklier than ever. Have everyone vacate the room at once, Dal. Commands the Count. What? Dal is confused and is increasingly anxious and wavery. But, but the Count menacingly turns to him, I said at once. Dal is scared and concerned. Now aging in dog years, he tells the rest of them everyone leave immediately. They begin leaving. Dal gulps, thinking about what the Count may now do to someone of the same social status as himself. Zondrick is vigorously smashing his bleeding head into a stone pillar. Ah! He says, winding back for another blow. Gah! The Count snakes an arm around his neck and holds him with a vice-like rigidity. Zondrick is helplessly locked in, grabbing at the Count's arm. You despise him, the Black Swordsman, don't you? Yes! Pleads Zondrick. I'd do anything. Anything. To kill him. Ha 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 says the Count, as he grabs Zondrick by the temples of his head. Very well then, and forces him to kneel. I'll grant your wish, he says, pulling Zondrick's face close to his own. Zondrick is stilled. The Count opens his mouth with something slimy inside. Zondrick is freaked. The slimy thing slowly extends out of the Count. E. Zondrick is very scared. A slug-like creature with the face of the Count is dribbling out of his mouth. Take it inside of you. My demon. And the slug enters Zondrick. Outside, a white guard approaches Dahl and his party of guards and physicians. Lord Dahl. What is it? One of our informers. He says he knows the whereabouts of the fugitive, the Black Swordsman. What? Dahl turns to the other guards. Excellent. Take thirty troops along with you and... The Count sweeps open the door. Wait. Your Excellency. Dahl spits in surprise. We lose the element of surprise if you send too many men to kill him. And don't forget what happened this afternoon. No matter how many foot soldiers we send after him, it's unlikely they'll be able to stop him says the Count. He clearly hasn't seen the Black Swordsman arc, link in description. I have a better plan. On cue, a sedated stilted Zondrick emerges. Dahl and the guards are surprised at his complexion. He is visibly uncanny, stiff, inflamed, and a different darker hue. And he is clearly zombified. Zondrick. Time has come for you to wreak vengeance to your heart's content. Zondrick smiles. He begins to croak out a laugh. He laughs maniacally. <laughs> we cut back to Guts and Co. chilling at Vargas's crib. Wow says Puck about the behelot. It's really well made. The behelot rests. Puck tries to match their face. But to no response. Puck points. Stretches out and touches the behelot. Nothing. Puck smacks the behelot. Phew. I don't believe it. It won't budge an inch. But if you look closely, it's kinda got a neat looking face. The behelot looks at Puck. It's art. Yeah. Art. Puck proclaims. Realization dawns. Puck smacks into Gut's boot at the table in surprise. Oh. It's not artwork. That thing's alive. Why didn't you tell me that before I touched it you big jerk? Well, it may be alive but it's no danger in its current state. Let's say it's a kind of tool. Well, how does it summon the god hand? Questions Buck. Baka. I wouldn't be going through all this trouble if I knew that. Puck looks back towards the behelot. It looks back. Gulp. Guts throws a question to Vargas I forgot to ask you something. How did the Count first get hold of this thing anyway? Vargas pauses from rummaging. By chance, he happened to buy it from a caravan of merchants that stopped by the castle one day. Even the merchants knew nothing about it. All they said was that they found it in a town bazaar somewhere to the east. Clarifies Vargas. By chance? Guts wonders. 
Vargas smacks a parchment on the table. Look at this. It's a layout map of the castle. He pins one end under a candelabra and holds down the rest. There's a secret passage used for escape from the castle that only a handful of people know about besides the Count himself. If all goes well, you should be able to reach the inner compound undetected. I wish I could go with you, but with this body of mine, I'd only be a hindrance. Guts smolders intensely. I beg you. Vargas says as he walks around the table to face Guts. Wavering, he continues. For the past seven years, I've waited for this day. I've waited for the day that a man like you would appear. Vargas approaches. You. You're my only hope. Please. Avenge me. Vargas grabs Guts' shoulder and plea. Guts is really peeved and loses his cool by this. He shoves off Vargas's hand from his shoulder and kicks him in the face so hard that Vargas slams into the opposite table, knocking several jars over. Don't touch me. Puck is startled. Guts, hey what's the big idea? Puck continues. Vargas holds his face where Guts kicked him. You make me sick. Don't you ever touch me like that again, understand? Guts grimaces. Have you seen yourself in the mirror lately? We learn mirrors have been invented in this world. You're the one who looks like a monster. At least make yourself a little more presentable. Puck grabs Guts by the cloak, which apparently Guts doesn't consider touching. Listen you. How come you're always picking on people like that? Puck interrogates. Guts smacks Puck on the body with a single flick, which hurts a bunch since he flings around several hundred kilos regularly. Why you jerk? Puck grabs their body. I it's okay. I don't mind. Says Vargas. If only you kill the Count. I don't care what you say about me. Vargas would care if Guts doesn't kill the Count. Old fella. Coos Puck, still feeling their sore body, humph. Spineless bastard Gatsa thinks to himself. He stands near the door in the room, turning to say I won't avenge you. But I'll kill him all the same. Shh. Quiet. He grabs his sword. Guts clocks on that something is coming. What's wrong? Asks Puck. Guts turns in anticipation. A demonic hulking figure smashes through the door with a massive iron war axe. They're all taken aback. Guts. Puck says, as the figure looms into the room. Guts recognizes the figure. It's demonic Zonderk. Puck recognizes too. The guy from this afternoon. Gotta berates you again? Tough bastard are ya? Zonderk gets triggered by the taunt. Guts readies to parry. Zonderk raises his war axe up to blow down on Guts. Zonder leaps forward as he smashes his war axe down. Guts and Puck are both caught off guard. Guts flies into the shell. Guts? Puck cries as Guts struggles to get up. Zonder closes in on Guts, preparing to strike again. A demonic smirk dances across his face. Guts feels a sting, his brand bleeds. Ah! Puck says as Zonder gets closer. Now I get it. You're not even human anymore. Guts postulates as he gets up. Zonder, not one for conversation, cries fool. I'll hack you to pieces. He preps a swing again on the kneeling black swordsman. Guts, cries Buck. Gatsu goes full hog and swings. Zonder's arm and war axe fly off, fully amputated. Puck and Vargas are ass smacked. Gatsu is cool. Zonder goes get as blood pours from the wound. You got him. Puck attempts fate as the axe and arm skid across the floor. Zonderk trembles, then smirks. Guts keeps guard. Vanny mucus covered tendrils swell from Zonderk's stump. Puck is surprised. The fleshy tendrils shoot out. They circle around Guts. Ah! cries Vargas as Zonderk swiftly flails the tendrils above them. The tendrils gingerly pick up the axe from Zonderk's arm. They entwine it, and Zonderk re-equips the war axe. Kill. Kill. What do you think of this chapter? Do you think Guts can defeat Demonic Zonderk? Comment down your opinion below.
Special thanks to all of our subscribers and you, the viewer. We really appreciate your help. If you would like to support our channel, please subscribe to our Patreon, HNODiki. We will put a link in the description below. Our next video will be about the housing market collapse. Lastly, we would like to recommend purchasing the official release. By buying, you can contribute to the author's estate and help us in our endeavors to review. Please subscribe and see you next time.